Hello, how are we going, Sydney? Are we good? We're at the end of the two days of Wide Wonder. I'm going to get you all to stand up. Let's go. Oh, before you stand up, pick up the little lights that you've got with you. We knew we were going to use them for something, right? We've already got a couple of people who have figured it out. Switch it on. You push it forward to switch it on. Great. Now, who knows what this is right now if, in this context? If I'm getting you guys all to stand up, what's this? It's you guys, isn't it? We've got a couple of tears going on here. The only thing I'm going to tell you here is that yellow, I'll let you figure out the rest together, but yellow means all of you. Let's go. <laughs> cool. This is an interesting little exercise that you're doing with me here. I'm liking this. <laughs> and yellow is everyone. Ready? Next one. <laughs> so we have some people holding them up and holding them down. We've got some people covering them. We're figuring out that this is you. This is the crowd. We've got a bit of a Mexican wave in this last one. Very good. Next one. There we go. Very quickly. We've got it. Yes, very nice. <laughs> Green, red, lovely. Excellent. And the last one, oh God, you guys are gonna love this one. Let's see how quickly you can sort this one out. Yellow is everyone, but they're the only two top tiers. Here we go, bottom tier. Figure this one out. Come on guys. We're clever here. How do you make this happen? We've got a couple of people switching, I see. Yeah. No. <laughs> this is from above, looking down. Ah, there we go. How are we going to make this happen? <laughs> we hurl them, don't we? We're going to work on this collective consciousness over time. Everyone, thank you very much for partaking in that with me. Take a seat. <laughs> I love the red ones that were being hurled into the center then. That was great. People were like, yes. Yeah. Did anyone get hit then? Are we all good? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jordan. Thank you for having me today. And thank you to Sarah Rucroft and the amazing Wide for Wonder team who have brought me back for the third year. I am absolutely privileged to be here. So we're going to start with imagination. Today's talk is very much about the virtual world and how that is becoming like parallel dimensions, but we've got to start with the imagination, don't we? We take it back to when we're young and, uh, and remember that imagination that you had when you were young. Uh, for me, it kind of looked like this. I had lots of friends, and I had a great imagination. Just used to be able to just think of everything, think of all these amazing things that were possibilities. Now, one great possibility came to life. My parents... Uh, they decided to have one more child after me, and, uh, and this child turned into three. They got triplets. And, <laughs> and I had my own little set of minions. <laughs> <laughs> they were great. We, uh, we used to come up with, with our own ideas, our own concepts for hypothetical games we'd get into. We'd be in these imaginary worlds where we'd all contribute different parts of what was happening. We'd, uh, we'd talk about what we were seeing, all the characters that were involved. We'd all get into it together. It was so much fun. And, uh, and later on, you know, we didn't have a great deal of toys when we were young, so we had to engage that creativity and imagination. So one point, I remember I got to go over to my mate's house, and he had a Nintendo, uh, one of the first Nintendos with Super Mario Brothers. We wanted it, yeah, woo, it was good. Everyone loved it. I wanted one, but we, uh, we, we didn't have any of those sort of toys. So instead, we decided to make our own. We, uh, we drew out the little mushrooms and the Mario characters, and we stuck them to rocks and stuck them to the, the back of sharpeners. And then I got behind a glass window and put them up against the glass window, and Alex would sit there and go, do, 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 do. And Tristan would be going, right, jump, right, jump. And I'd be moving them behind the, the window. <laughs> we made our own Super Mario Brothers. That was great fun. So being able to take that imagination that sometimes we do tend to have stamped out over time, 
We need to be able to harness that in the next generations coming through and to be able to allow them to keep that imagination. But we can still bring it back and we can still exercise that. So the next big thing, question reality. As we move into this new world, this new future where virtual reality is starting to come up, augmented reality is starting to become a thing, we're starting to blur those lines between the real and the virtual. I was talking about this on stage with Steve Wozniak a couple of months ago. Uh, so Steve Wozniak was taking us through who he was as a child. He was someone who loved to, to play pranks on people. He loved electronics, but he loved the prank part. He'd play pranks, and that's how he learned electronics. He did what he loved doing. And, uh, and that's what brought him and Steve Jobs together. A mate once uh, between them said, you both like playing pranks, you both like electronics, and brought them together. So from the personal computer revolution that um, uh, once was, that was able to come up with this idea and, and, uh, and implement the first personal computer, all the way through to the internet revolution, something happened in between. We had a rise in investment going into virtual reality in the late 80s and early 90s but it wasn't the right time. So what happened when the internet revolution rose? We then had it go all the way through to the smartphone revolution, and the uh, virtual reality stuff died out up until we got to the smartphones. Now, why did this bring back virtual reality? We have everything we need in this. We've got very high resolution, small screens. We've got fast processing power, and this has the ability to track its own movements and its own, the angle that it's on. So basically, when you take these devices and you strap it to your face, it's a, it's a uh, neurological trick. So you see an environment from one direction, from one angle, and you see that on the screen. As you turn your head, it detects its movements and it pans the screen really quickly. It's a neurological trick making you believe that you're, well, in some way, tricking your brain into thinking that you're in that location. So that was very interesting. We started to, to talk about that and where, where virtual reality is going, and uh, <laughs> we gave him a virtual reality experience and he loved it. So this is, uh, this is was being shocked by technology. <laughs> now, these concepts came up in The Matrix, didn't they? Morpheus talked to Neo about how this chair in The Matrix is not real, but he perceives it as being real. It's called our umwelt. It's the perception of reality that we have. It's how our brain interprets all these signals that are sent from our body. They're all electrical impulses interpreted by the brain, and that's what we feel. That's our perception of reality. Our brain also sends out many signals to our body to control it, but these are the sort of signals that we can think about, we can harness. When it comes to the signals that go to the brain, it's how our brain interacts with the world and takes information in from the world. And so that's very interesting when it's being harnessed into virtual reality. So the next thing, you've got to be able to free your mind to the possibilities because now we're moving into this world where anything is possible. When you free your mind to the possibilities, anything is possible. So in TEDx Sydney this year, we wanted to take people through this idea of where we've gone with technology, what we've been able to create now with virtual reality. And what we did was we went through this week and a half of intense, uh, intense programming. We had 84 cameras all the way around. Um, myself and Nick Temple from Psykinetic joined forces with the Humance team, and we created this virtual copy of me. 84 cameras facing inwards, that would take all those different images, put them together to collate it into three dimensions, a three-dimensional image of me, to give across that idea of we can create a copy of ourselves. And I got people to think about it. What would you react? How would you react if you stood face to face with yourself? And you can see on screen what I'm seeing. So I was able to physically walk around my virtual self. And it was a really strange thing that happened here. I had this external objective experience of myself, and so what happened was I noticed that my, uh, my virtual self, his right shoulder was dropped, his right shoulder blade was dropped, and yeah, and I, I thought, you should get that scene too. <laughs> I'd been told about this for five years. I've been told by so many people, you should get that scene too, you should go and see a podiatrist, and so after seeing it myself, I went and saw a podiatrist, got in lazy in my right shoe, and suddenly I'm all good. It's a funny thing, I never got to see that in the mirror because we don't have that perception. We have something inbuilt in our brain that uh, builds up our personal self that we see in the mirror, but we don't see us for exactly how we are. So we're starting to push this into the idea of um, trying to, to see if it could work in body dysmorphia and, and, uh, and eating disorders, to have that external objective experience. But it's about being creative with the technologies that we have available today. So I've designed for you today a 
a bit of a layout here. So myself and Nick Temple from Psykinetic, we, we designed this layout. It's very simple, but we made a virtual version of this stage to show you what's happening in virtual reality. Now, the idea is when virtual reality has real-world locations, you guys are all Lego people, by the way. <laughs> It's like a parallel dimension. There's another dimension where everything is green. There's another one where we're all robots. And we're all standing here like robots. And there's another dimension where, well, there's no gravity. <laughs> <laughs> so all you Lego people are flying everywhere. Now, these things are like parallel dimensions. The idea that virtual reality, even though we create it, as soon as it has real-world locations, means that we're shaping reality in a whole different way than ever before. What we're doing is we're affecting change into the virtual world, and the virtual world can affect change into the real world. I'm going to bring uh, our wonderful Sarah Rucroft out on stage, if she is around. Everyone, Sarah Rucroft. My <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You're going to help us demonstrate something. I'm going to get myself way out of the way, stand okay. in the middle of the red dot, and you're going to take over my avatar, hopefully. Maybe not. Oh. Move around a bit. When technology works. Oh, no. It doesn't work at all. Let's see. If you move out. Yep. And I'll move in. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it knows me. It knows me too well. Let's have another go. I'm, I'll I'm move not, out. I'm not tall enough, obviously. Move around. OK. So take a step back. <laughs> OK. Right. Now, there we go. You're me. Oh my God, now, I'm so amazing. Now, what I'm going to do here, <laughs> is that how I move? I just yeah. do this all the time. <laughs> I'm changing the world. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing quite a dance there, actually. I look like I'm sitting because I'm so short. <laughs> look, now I'm like taller. Okay. Right, you ready for this one? Yeah, okay. So, I'm going to create a virtual button right in front of you. We can't see it because it's not in the real world, but it's in the virtual world, which is in front of you. See that button? Try pressing that with your right hand. I've also connected it to something else. Pull your hand out, put it back in. Oh. You see, your movements are affecting change into the virtual world, which has been connected back to our real world devices. Try again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> You could do that all day, right? Yeah, I'm like... One more Ooh. go, turn it off, and then we can, <laughs> we can like, end it there. I'm like the little rat with the dopamine <laughs> thing, right? Ooh, more dopamine, wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Everyone, thanks. <laughs> thank you. And there we are. I'm back again. Now, let's step this up a little bit. Let's step it up a little bit more. The idea that we can affect that change into the virtual world, back into the real world, means that we have to think about the impact of where this is all going, of how we are going to start harnessing the virtual world in many different ways, because we can hack into so many different systems. So this is going to raise many areas of uh, security, of digital security, but knowing that we can affect that change, bring out that imagination and see what you can do. Watch this. Ready? And no, no one backstage is sorting this out for me. Purely through what's happening in the virtual world, taking control of the real world, I've got that control. And I can release it now. So being able to see that interaction, see that response, we've started thinking about this in whole new creative ways. The fact that we shape reality is so important to know. So we've started thinking about this in many different respects. How can this potentially impact us? How can these ideas impact us? Like I told you before, our brain is full of electrical impulses. What happens when we send out signals to our body? 
It's all electri electricity. And this is what we came across with the, uh, uh, the documentary Becoming Superhuman this year. So I've got a young mate, Riley, he's 13 years old, and his mother told us this idea. She said that he, when he was young, he once looked at the lights and tried to make it turn on. He'd stare at the TV and try and make it change channel. Now, Riley can't use a conventional um, remote because he was born with high-level cerebral palsy, so he communicates with the world through his eyes. And being able to harness those signals was how we got creative on it. The signals that uh, make your eyes move, your brain sends all these signals to the muscles to push and pull your eyes. And because his eyes were so active, because that was his window into the world, how he communicates with us, and he's so expressive with his eyes, we decided to create a headband throughout this documentary series that would pick up on the electrical activity of his eyes. Oh, sorry, I just lasered someone up there, didn't I? <laughs> to achieve his big dream of driving a car. Now, he wanted to drive this car, and I thought, shit, how the hell are we going to make that happen? But the headband here is picking up on the electrical activity of his eyes. It's being sent and digitized, and then over through the cloud, back into a computer, which is affecting change in the car. So he was able to, with the electrical activity of his eyes, completely take control of this off-road buggy. And we decided not to take it slow at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we thought, let's think big. He wanted it to look like a cyborg, so we had blue lights going up, and he just took off. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll leave you guys to go and see that yourselves. We don't, we've run out of time, but that's called Becoming Superhuman, and we take people through that journey of creation. His mum telling us about him wanting to turn on those lights and to control the TV, I said, that's like telekinesis. He, he started telling people it was his superpower one day when the channel changed. So that's where we came up with the idea for Becoming Superhuman, for being able to control technology through the digital world. And that's called telekinesis. That's technological telekinesis. So we said, we'll create this, and we'll allow you to control the lights. We'll allow you to control the TV, because when we're creative, when we use our imagination, this is possible through the virtual world, through the digital world. And what happened was these amazing ripples. With Riley, he started, because we believed in him, because we got to take that to that next level and see what we could do, he started finding this amazing fascination with technology. Now he wants to start developing technology himself, and the best part is he's been going on to counsel people twice his age to say, if you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything, and that's so true. So question reality, stay curious to the possibilities, because even the impossible is possible with the way that technology is going. Free your mind, encourage creativity in yourself and in others, and that imagination that we all have, that we were born with. Whether we've lost it over time, whether it's not quite where it was before, you still have that, so come up with those big ideas. And just remember, we shape reality. Whether it's virtual or real, we shape reality. So raise that collective consciousness. You helped me out with that before, with the, all the lights. Keep talking, keep raising these conversations, and let's see how we can change the world together. Thank you very much.